in in previous video we talked about how to install splunk phantom in google cloud instances right now in this video we'll be talking about splunk phantom overview so it's kind of like end to end flow what's going on in phantom so hopefully this will set the ground for for the next videos we'll be working on so so, so let's start so so if we just talk about so if we just talk about splunk the initial question comes to our mind is how to ingest data into splunk right now similar stuff in phantom also now as phantom is a sort tool right so that means we can have various different data sources like splunk enterprise security or splunk etc even you can ingest data into phantom from some from some custom security solutions or firewall devices or virus or malware scanners so it, the the inputs are endless over here so only thing is that you will be ingesting those data where you need to perform some kind of analysis in phantom either in a automated way or in some other way for an example from splunk etc you can ingest notable events into splunk phantom and then perform some kind of analysis in the phantom either using by by automated way like using the playbooks and all those stuff okay so so we we understood what kind of data sources we generally will be using in in splunk phantom now let's talk about other concepts so the next most important concept we need to understand here is the common event format now in the previous slide we talked about data sources from where we are ingesting our data into splunk phantom now the data the format of the data over here is important okay and the format we call is the common event format now we can think of cef as if we just talk about in splunk enterprise the common information model it's kind of similar concept common event format so common event format is basically the the, the abbreviation is cef it's an open log management standard so if you worked on arc site and those stuff maybe you are already familiar with this this particular concept now now it basically improves the interoperability of the security related information from different network and security devices and applications okay so in phantom generally phantom comes with lot of apps which can help us to convert the data from different data sources to this common event format okay so so we introduced a new stuff a new term called apps in splunk phantom so it is kind of similar concept whatever we have in splunk enterprise but the splunk phantom apps can have lot of capabilities other capabilities which we will be seeing in later part of this video so if i just talk about what common event format is so it's the format by which the data needs to be ingested into splunk phantom in in, in a single line now if we just talk about the next concept which is called the containers so we talked about data sources from there we are converting the data into the cef format then we are ingesting into splunk phantom now whatever we are ingesting as a as a event or whatever in splunk enterprise we call it as event but in splunk phantom we basically call it as containers so containers we can thought of as security events in 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 splunk phantom now there are a lot of other concept related to container so let us see that one so first thing we'll be talking about the container schema so now we talked about the container before right so in in if we just talk about in terms of technical terms so container is nothing but a json object in in splunk phantom and if you see it this is kind of a schema and i have downloaded this one from the splunk website only so splunk documentation basically so now if you see it it, it has a proper structure it's a, this is nothing but these are these are all the different key value pairs you will be seeing for a for a general containers in in splunk phantom and one of the important thing we need to notice over here is the level over here so for this example the level was incident so let's talk about 
container label now so for the container label we can we can basically set for a particular container the container means we talk about so if we just talk about splunk enterprise and compare it it's a event container is nothing but an event in splunk phantom now we can assign a label to this particular container so that that's just to make clear that what kind of content it contains now the one of the major advantage of setting a label to a particular container is in the phantom ui this label will be available for easy navigation purpose which will be seeing it in later videos and another advantage of container label is we can run playbooks on containers which match a specific label as well we'll we'll talk about playbooks in in later part of this video but these are all the different advantages of creating container labels for an example if we are ingesting vulnerability data from a vulnerability management product we can set a container name as or container label as vulnerabilities or if we are ingesting data from a it intelligence source ip intelligence source then we can name or label this particular container as intelligence okay now let's move on so let's again go back to this container schema and let's see other details over here one of the important details is artifact count here and which lead us to the concept of artifacts here so in a container we can have a lot of artifacts now artifact we can think of it as a pieces of information stored in a container maybe if we just talk about in terms of splunk enterprise it's kind of field extraction extracted field we can thought of as a artifact okay now artifact also has its own schema if you see it over here and this one also i have taken it from the splunk documentation only and if you see it here we have a container id over here so like uh, which under which container this artifact is attached to so that container id will be over here and there are certain other fields which are important here is the cef the common event format which we talked about in initial part of this video and if you see the data so this data basically holds the raw data part which is nothing but that underscore raw field in our splunk enterprise and cef we can thought of as a normalized field which we talk about if you if you just followed my sim videos there we normalized all those fields right so cef is similar kind of stuff over here okay so we got an idea about what container is and what artifact is now let's talk about case so so we have the splunk data sources then we are ingesting or basically converting into cef format and then we are ingesting into splunk phantom as a security events and we as 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 we saw we can create multiple containers right because there could be multiple events we will be ingesting into splunk phantom each event can be as a separate container now there could be a need that to analyze a particular situation you may need details from multiple containers correct so in those cases you can basically promote a particular container as a case then add the other containers other related containers to that particular case so that your whole analysis will be much much easier so if you are running some playbook on it because playbooks are actually runs on this containers so if you are trying to run a single playbook on different containers so you can promote or basically manage as as a case and then run your playbook on a case okay so the whole idea behind this one is to consolidate and investigate so that's the main idea behind this one now let's move on let's talk about playbooks now so we we got very good idea about what data sources are how we are converting it and how what is the container what is the artifacts right now now in in splunk phantom if you want to perform some kind of automated action on on this containers suppose you you ingested a 
email into splunk phantom which it which you thought like it's it may be a spam so you need to take some action on that email maybe move it to some delete that email or move it to some other folder that those kind of actions you can perform on that particular stuff right so that thing you can automate with the playbooks in in splunk phantom now as i said playbooks are basically used for analysis purpose and taking some action purpose now over here as as i as i told in the initial part of the video so splunk apps comes into picture when we are trying to convert the data into the into the cea format from the different data sources now splunk apps also come over here as well to provide a separate actions different actions you can perform on a particular container or case so if you if you see the splunk phantom apps so there is already in some lot of apps available already in splunk phantom which you can leverage to take certain actions or you can create your own apps as well so similar stuff for playbooks as well there are a lot of playbooks comes with splunk phantom out of the box but you can always create your own playbooks as well in in python which we'll be seeing it in later videos okay so this is the portion so playbooks and apps are actually works hand in hand to provide some so apps are basically used to provide some actions to this so, so provide some actions here so that playbook can call them and and use it for its own purpose okay so that means the app connects so basically this app connects the splunk phantom to the third party services and provide actions like for that email deleting email or moving it to some other folders you can use office 365 app and over there you can see you will see a lot of actions there so you can directly call those actions from your playbook and perform actions there that's the idea behind this one now let's move on let's talk about more about apps and assets now so we already got a good idea about what splunk phantom apps are so it basically helps us to convert the incoming events to cea format and as well as provide some actions so let's say we have a palo alto network app pa and firewall app now this app can be configured for different firewall devices we have in our enterprise okay so let's say we have firewall 1 we have three firewalls firewall 2 and the firewall 3 so we can we can basically configure this app for these three firewalls okay that's the idea and so these things this this three stuffs are actually called the assets in 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 splunk phantom so its assets are nothing but the instances of an app so this app can be configured for three assets three firewall devices we have in our in our enterprise okay so now assets can be managed by a person which is called the owner so he can he can manage those assets and and there are a lot of stuff owners can do maybe which we will be seeing it in in later videos as well now let's move on now splunk phantom has a concept of workbooks as well so workbook we can thought of as we can thought of as separate separate task so let's say uh, for a particular security event you uh, you wanted to perform your analyst wanted to perform a defined set of task okay so in that case you can automate those task using workbooks so you can it basically comes with lot of phases and each and every phase can be interdependent as well so you can check some condition then then run some other phases so that that kind of branching you can do as well and for each and every phase there are set of task you can execute even you can execute a playbook as a part of this task as well so this type of stuff you can define in in splunk phantom as well so that whatever a particular event occurs so it is just well defined either it's fully automated or maybe it's semi automated as well okay so this is the concept of splunk workbook maybe let let let's take an uh, let's take a example of splunk workbook i will just try to open a link here so if i just go to this particular link if you say maybe i'll be providing this blog link as well in my video description so if you see it like you can define workbook something like this one so let's say when a device is stolen so you can perform a set of actions like you can see the first you can you need to secure the account then if it is encrypted then the delete the keys if it is not encrypted if it is has sensitive data then take some actions something like this one 
okay file a police report file insurance claim so everything you can define so maybe not all of this can be fully automated but some part can be full automated as well using the splunk playbook phantom playbook basically okay so this is the overall concept of workbook so hopefully we got a fair idea about what's going on so the end to end flow of splunk phantom so which this 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 idea can be very much helpful in the latter part of the videos where we'll be maybe trying to implement some of the use cases i have to i would still design that that use cases but maybe i'll i will try to come up with something good which which, which we can at least use it for educational purpose at least the concept building purpose so hopefully this video was helpful see you in the next video